Hi, welcome to Bygone Games, and to the first chapter, first proper episode of this novella that is being done for the Mustering of Lanahale D&D campaign um, that I have ran for several years now for uh, a couple friends of mine. If anyone is looking to find the recorded podcast games for this campaign, I apologize, and uh, they don't exist. This game was recorded, well, was not recorded. Uh, it was started much, much before um, I even began to record our games. Um, for reference, for looking and dating it, uh, it was, it's about a year or so, uh, even older than the werewolf campaign that was being done. So it's, it's an older one. Um, however, I did think that this campaign and this story deserved recognition on this channel. Uh, so I'm still working out exactly how I want to do it, but I will be sharing this story with you in these chapter-esque formatted videos. Um, with that all out of the way, I would invite you all to sit back, maybe put your ear earbuds in, grab something to drink or a snack, and enjoy a few minutes of story for the reading of this first chapter of the campaign. Chapter 1. The Pike. Regarding Lanahel, the human kingdom that shares the name of this continent, our tale begins in late winter of the year 479 of the Imperial Calendar. King Novarian of House Gaius ruled alongside Queen Car Caria. Jasper Sylvain of House Sylvain arrived in Verdun while riding north to Turnock in order to start his required military service with the legions before he could claim his noble title. He was red of hair and perhaps no older than twenty-two. It is said that he carried about him the mannerisms of a poet or a muse, and many of the young ladies of the realm could recall fond memories of his company, much to the chagrin of their fathers. It is also said that his skills as a fencer were some of the best of the nobility in his generation. Verdun was and remains the seat of House Ceres and is the jewel of the frontier. Seated on and around a hill, the city was a bustling trade hub of the northwest, and its fields fed many who lived in that corner of the kingdom. The home of House Ceres was surrounded by beautiful gardens and was renowned as a house of healing and respite to many. Here, Jasper encountered Algathar Merkimer, or Merk, a member of the Mage College in Ethermore and contracted wizard of House Briar. His stature was short, not even surpassing five and a half feet at the top of his head. His robes were a dark blue trimmed in yellow, the heraldry of House Briar. His staff was made of pine and was angular, coalescing in a green gemstone at its tip. It was at this meeting that Pontus Ceres addressed the two, asking, If you plan to travel north to Tarnock, I would ask a favor of you. I have heard rumors that several rangers and legionaries stationed at the Pike Garrison northeast of here have gone missing. Many of these men are my own and I would like to know the details of the situation. If you could escort the next supply shipment heading to the outpost, and perhaps send a raven, or return to me with news, I would greatly appreciate the help. I'm sure the caravan would also offer you a reward as well on their safe arrival at the outpost. The two agreed to Lord Ceres's request, as Merc was headed east to return to his home in the Briar Vale to attend his lord, and Jasper more so out of an obligation to the realm and as an apology to Lord Ceres for his past interactions with Lady Sonya, Lord Ceres's eldest daughter. 
before departing the home, Jasper sought after Lady Sonia, and they met. Their meeting was filled with the warmth and teasing that only former lovers forced apart can share. She said she was filled with joy upon seeing him again, but that her romantic feelings for him had faded, and she held him now as a close friend. Not one to take matters lying down, Jasper stayed with her through the evening, enjoying wine and her company, kissing her hand and promising his safe return south again after his time with the legions. She smiled and hugged him, bidding her friend farewell as he departed for the evening. Upon the morn, both Merck and Jasper met with the caravan they were to accompany. It was a collection of five wagons, made of elven, dwarven, human, and halfling merchants. One of the group, a half-elven mercenary and sometimes fortune-seeker, Zelina Runehouse, befriended Jasper and Merck. She was wiry and slender, and her brown hair was shaven short on one side, but hung to her shoulder on the other. She had already been hired as a caravan guard, and grew to enjoy the company of the young nobleman and wizard. A full-blooded elf, our main Briarith, also became past friends with the growing party. He was tall, though still shorter than Zelina, and had fair golden hair. Comparatively to his short-lived human companions, Romain was already past his hundredth year, and spoke of his travels with his family business as a traveling merchant. He also told of his faith in the crescent moon and stars of Corlon Lorithian, and how he had taken up worship of the elven god as a cleric. With fresh supplies and their new convoy, or and their new escort, the convoy headed north towards Rahurst, making good time. Stopping only long enough to resupply and rest the horses, the party heard that a warg pack had recently been harassing the village. This gave the convoy a reasonable pause. Typically thought as no more than wolves, wargs were of course closer to ponies in size, and our main knew that the, be the beast possessed a cunning and intelligence that was far more dangerous than wolves. Not to mention the goblinoids or orcs that would likely be accompanying them. Those who did not already possess them purchased bows and full quivers for extra security before the convoy pressed on. For the next two nights, the group heard the howling of the beasts in the distance, but the convoy kept hidden as they made their way to the foothills of the Kelt Peaks and pressed onwards towards the mountain pass that held the small town of Ternok, the seat of House Rockus, where Jasper's uncle Brom ruled. The fortress of Ternok rested alongside the western side of a mountain pass, with a large stone wall, wide enough for five men to stand abreast, ran across the pass until another smaller tower capped it on the eastern side. The town of Ternok was small in comparison to the cities many of the other noble houses controlled, but due to its proximity to the north, the civilians of Ternok prided themselves in being an effective fighting force. Along with House Fracia, House Rockus had been revered as protectors of the realm, something that Jasper's family took great pride in. The caravan settled in at town and began to trade any excess supplies not bound for the pike, while Jasper, Merc, Zelina, and Armain headed to the fortress to speak with Jasper's Uncle Brom. The group was met with open arms. Lord Brom Rockus was a grizzled old legion commander, a salt and pepper beard to match his short cut hair, the gut of a strong man with scarred and battered hands. He was commonly known as an old badger by the southernmost houses due to his disregard for formal etiquette and his temper. He embraced Jasper and doted on him as he was Brom's only nephew. Brom's son Maximus was also present, while in truth they were cousins, Maximus and Jasper had shared a bond of brotherhood since their time bef since their time at the Noble Academy. While the group was welcomed and fed, proper business was discussed. 
the group told of Lord Ceres's concerns, and asked for any information that Brahm or Maximus might have. Jasper also asked for leave from his legion deployment until such a time that this situation was handled. While helpful, the news they received from Maximus and Brahm was sparse. Maximus spoke of his recent patrols north and how the northern tribes were on the move east. Many of the losses to the rangers had arisen from contacts with migrating tribes that were too close to the border. They're going to moot, Brom had said. The northerners only gather like that when something big is happening. Either old King Hrothgar has finally died, or something big enough to get them all worried has happened. Either way, I think it's best that you head to the pike and get in touch with Tristan, the head ranger at the fort. With the end of the discussion, the group stayed the evening, either in the town of Turnock or in guest quarters provided to them in the fortress itself, before heading to the pike early the next morning under the cover of light snowfall. The pike was an isolated mountain fort between Turnock and the dwarven hold of Dunladur. A small dirt road cut into the mountainside passed through the eastern and western gates of the fort, but it saw little use, and was usually washed out by seasonal storms. The caravan was led inside to find a small military community. A garrison of maybe thirty rangers, and several families or craftsmen that had followed their loved ones here for their legion service to the realm. Also present was a young woman named Myara, who was serving as a paladin of Pelor, the Dawn Father. Strong-shouldered and tall, a long dark braid of hair was left hanging from her helm. Both Jasper and Merc recognized her as Myara of House Freysia. She was the bastard daughter of Lady Guinevere, the lady who had been forced to disown her by her new husband. She was closely aged with Jasper, though his senior by a couple years. They greeted each other with a passing familiarity, and she disclosed that she was also here to assist the rangers, as she had seen a vision of the northern mountains and had decided to investigate the matter. After making their way through the fort, the group spotted an old northerner, probably well past his 70th winter, who had been captured trying to cross the border. Thin and wiry from age and scrounging in the wilderness, his hair and beard were the color of snow, and as he sat tied to a post, he snoozed comfortably in the cold weather that had persisted for the last several days. The rangers said he was of the Varg tribe, based on a tattoo of a snarling wolf found on his bicep, but he spoke very little common, so he had yet to be interrogated. It was made apparent that the head ranger was occupied for the evening and had yet to return, so the group settled into a cold night in the fort, curious of what information they could glean from the northerner come morning. And with that... That concludes the first chapter here of the Pike, um, and the first chapter of this story of the now forming adventurer party uh, reaching the mountain fort of the Pike. The next chapter will be, uh, well, we'll be meeting not the last but another member of the party and saying what information about this uh, seemingly dangerous situation has befallen the northern border of Lanahale. Uh thank you again anyone who is tuning in I always appreciate uh, the comments and likes and honestly just views that I get on some of these videos it surprises me uh, that <laughs> with how little subscribers I have, even a quarter of you are still tuning in regularly. It is quite nice to know. Um, with that, I think I'm going to bring things to a close and uh, just would like to say I hope you have a great day and I hope to hear from you all again soon.
Thank you very much for watching.